all right my people your boy here mc i'm coming back with the reaction of the second part of uh nile river how the nile can provide life and divide nations part two so if you haven't seen part one please stop right now go watch part one and then come continue to watch this because it's very important for you to know where it comes from and where we are going all right and all in all i still acknowledge the tension that is right there right now between ethiopia south i mean ethiopia sudan and egypt um and i know things are not looking pretty well and that's why i've decided to dive in deep to see the roots of what is going on so that when i give my uh, personal opinion uh, then i can give the opinion from the point of understanding what's really going on all right right now i'm just gonna go direct and shout out to Anio for uh, releasing an amazing videos concerning uh, Nile River. All right, let's First go. First video of this two-part series, we focused on the importance of the Nile River for its riparian nations. In this video, we would like to discuss mm. new initiatives for using the Nile, and we will look at a project that is currently causing a conflict between Egypt and Ethiopia. As already mentioned in the first video, a large part of the population of Egypt mm. lives in the Nile Delta. About two-thirds of the Egyptian population lives here, and about half of the country's agricultural production is achieved here. Due to climate change and rising sea levels, much of this area could be flooded. A sea level rise of just one meter would result in a flooding of more than a quarter of the area of the Nile Delta. In order to counteract the high concentration of the country's population, as well as to create more usable agricultural land, Egypt plans to redirect part of the Nile. In 1978, the government started building the Sadat Canal. It allows high water levels to drain into a plateau northwest of Lake Nasser. Between 1998 and 2001, this led to the creation of the Toshka Lakes. The filling represents only a partial success. Since the water here cannot run off and the evaporation in this region is very high, these two lakes have shrunk ever since. But the filling is part of a much bigger venture, the New Valley Project. Originally proposed in 1968 by then-president Gamal Abdel Nasser, the idea was to harness new land in the western desert by creating a second river course that connects several oases. In 1997, then-Egyptian president Hosni Mubarak revived these plans and initiated the construction of the Sheikh Zayed Canal, named such based on a substantial financial support from the United Arab Emirates. A huge pumping station was built at Lake Nasser, which pumps Nile water into this canal. Because of the enormous cost and slow progress, some people refer to this project as Mubarak's Pyramid. New agricultural areas were created. However, this type of cultivation requires expensive irrigation systems. And the yield per area is significantly lower than in the Nile Valley. As of today, only the first construction phase was completed, so the canal doesn't reach the first oasis. However, the current Egyptian president, al-Sisi, announced that he would resume the project. Meanwhile, there are a number of dams on the Nile, such as the Senner Dam in Sudan, which was completed in 1925. It is used for the irrigation of the Gezira Plain, between Blue and White Nile. This is one of the largest irrigation projects in the world. In 1966, the Waseris Dam was opened, which is now also being used for irrigation in this area. And in 2009, the Moro Dam in North Sudan was finished, which is mainly used for energy production. In Ethiopia, especially since the 90s, more and more dams are being built to generate electricity. However, the Egyptian government heavily criticizes some of these projects. For example, the Belt's hydroelectric power plant completed in 2010, which was seen as a provocation. Egypt's concern is to get into a dependency, and the government fears getting their water tap turned off by Ethiopia. But the main issue between both countries is this project. 
the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, which is currently being built near Ethiopia's border with Sudan. With 6,000 megawatts, the connected hydropower plant will be the largest in Africa. With this, the country's power generation capacity would more than double. Not only the electricity supply of Ethiopia would be secured, but the country could even export energy. The resulting reservoir will be one of the largest on the continent. Once this dam is finished, it first has to be filled, which will probably take between 3 to 15 years. Filling can be done wow. quickly, in which case there would be significantly less water in Sudan and Egypt for this period, or slower, which is not in the interest of Ethiopia. In addition, like any dam reservoir here, the resulting lake will lead to large amounts of water evaporating. Therefore, Egypt fears that the dam will reduce the amount of water and is strictly against the project. In their opposition, the Egyptian government refers to an agreement that governs the distribution of the Nile water. After the United Kingdom withdrew from Egypt and Sudan in 1956, both countries reached the Nile Water Agreement. It states that of the annual water volume of estimated 84 billion cubic meters, Egypt holds rights to 66% and Sudan 22%. Back then it was estimated that the remaining 12% will be lost through evaporation. The other riparian oh. nations were not even mentioned in the agreement, even though most Nile water originates here. In May 2010, these upstream nations formed this doesn't make sense. for a fairer distribution of Nile water. Both Egypt and Sudan refused to renegotiate their share of the waters of the Nile. Doesn't make for sense. For years, Egypt and Ethiopia have been negotiating about the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, but they have not been able to come to an agreement. Former Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi had repeatedly threatened Ethiopia with war if the two countries don't agree. If the Nile River's water decreases by a single drop, then our blood is the alternative. The current Ethiopian Prime Minister and 2019 Nobel Peace Prize laureate Abiy Ahmed has repeatedly affirmed that the dam should not harm Egypt. I want to tell the Egyptian people we Ethiopians abide to the principles of brotherhood and good neighborhood. We fear God. Therefore, we have no desire to cause harm to the Egyptian people. An Egyptian president, al-Sisi, is also in favor of cooperation between the countries. However, they still were not able to come to an agreement. The different interests are difficult to reconcile, but at the same time, all Nile nations are aware that cooperation is important in tackling water problems in the region. In order to secure the water supply for agriculture, industry and private households, dams along the Nile are an important tool. Proposed increase of seawater desalination plants could also play a role, but they are very expensive and not necessarily environmentally friendly. Similarly, rationing water consumption could prove important. Especially suitable for this is water reclamation as well as more efficient irrigation methods, for example, through the use of drip irrigation. Historically, the Nile has always played a crucial role in this region, and it illustrates the dependence of human societies on regenerative natural cycles. The usage of the Nile in the context of population growth and climate change are issues that will most likely be central in the coming decades. All right. Okay, guys, that's the second part, and I'm gonna have a moment to talk a little bit. Um, so here's my opinion and my thoughts. All right, you guys, you feel free to share your thoughts as well in the comment section. Uh, my thoughts and my opinion is that I think these agreements they have to be renewed because these are agreements that were done long time ago, pretty much long time ago with you know white people, people who are um, not even living there right now for their own benefit because when you look at the borders of africa when you look at how they divided different countries when you look at all these projects how they did they did for their favor it was not for our favor so i think we need to renew uh we need to have a new agreement concerning Nile river and that's because it's not fair seeing that egypt is receiving 60 60 percent of the Nile River, while other countries where the Nile originated, like Ethiopia, and some other country here down Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda, and 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 some other countries where like the Lake Victoria coming from, they're receiving nothing. All right, that's I think that's this where the problem is because 
just saying that 60 percent is you know egypt and then um how how was that like 20 22 22 percent for sudan while while ethiopia and all these three countries kenya tanzania and uganda they have nothing i think it doesn't make sense and because of that right now i'm not going to talk about this but i think this tension we even had back in the days from home tanzania you know because um the the part of nile river like the water comes also from victoria lake which which is actually the the source of nile river from kenya tanzania and uganda and but when you look at blue nile where like the nile also originated like 60 percent of water come from there and then ethiopia they don't have any percent it doesn't make sense you know what i'm saying so in, in, in one way i think in one side i can understand why ethiopians are being frustrated that you know what it has been for many years we haven't been uh, you guys you didn't acknowledge that this is our thing you didn't recognize it so right now we're gonna do whatever we want to do but it makes sense in that side and then on the other side i think egyptians government they also have to understand that hey i think this re uh, this um agreement that we had it was not really favoring all the countries including here because imagine this if today let's say uh like ethiopia let's say and all these countries around the lake victoria decide to close that okay we don't want you know we're gonna close because this water is coming from our countries what's gonna happen that means the nile river is not gonna have water anymore so i uh, up to this point i think the only solution we have is for this government and i know they already agreed uh, and i mean they couldn't agree but i think the only solution we have is to sit down and to try to write another agreement that will favor all this country egyptian egypt egypt government to acknowledge that you know the water that is in nile river is coming from these countries and we have to acknowledge them and we have to acknowledge them and what they're doing and we have to give their percentage and as well for them to i mean for this country as well to understand that all right this water that is coming from our country is gonna is gonna also help our brothers and sisters from other countries and therefore uh, since this has to be a win-win situation that's basically what i'm saying like simply speaking it has to be a win-win situation otherwise it's gonna be hard and me as Swahili nation i'm here to to you know to encourage one africa to and i know in the situation like this it's very hard to it's very difficult to have unity to have oneness between country and country but i think it's the time to sit down and to review and to reset again all these agreements that happened long time ago you know and every country has to win we need to have win-win situation right? we need to have it, it might not be the same for all the countries but we need to have win-win situation otherwise we're gonna end up fighting and that's not an option we cannot honestly <sighs> it really hurts me when i look at african leaders and standing and say like you know what by hooks and crooks we're gonna use blood to earn it's it's not a simple thing to talk about you know what i'm saying you cannot talk about war just like the way you talk about dogs okay you know what i'm saying well it, it's gonna cause a lot of lives to be lost and of course a lot of damage in african countries and we cannot reach there we are brothers and sisters we need to agree we need to agree we need to sit in the same table and we need to lay down to acknowledge one another the pain that we've been through egypt they have to acknowledge the pain that ethiopian has been through or sudan or uh, all these other countries they need to acknowledge and also us we need to acknowledge the pain that they're going through and we need to come to an agreement you know anyway that's that's just my opinion uh, you guys let me know in the comment section your opinion as well uh, i think this is beautiful you know just to share our opinion and what we think about the situation anyways guys um regardless of everything that's going on i just hope that we continue to love one another and spread peace and i hope we're gonna have this conversation uh as soon as possible i appreciate guys until next time so nation so to the world love and peace out